Today, I will show you how to use a precision gun to make an intricate but easy to follow design. We'll be making a beautiful hibiscus with some extremely simple techniques. Let me show you exactly how I did it. Oh, by the way, the original is for sale now on my website and remember to get your orders in soon so they arrive in time for Christmas. Beginning of November, it's freezing cold here in London, so I'm already thinking warm sun, flowers. I haven't done a flower for a very long time now. So today is time for a particular plant that I've been wanting to do for ages, but I haven't done it yet. A hibiscus. Wasn't sure which canvas will be best, but I think I'll stick with this one and I'll try to make a nice long stem with a couple of blossoms. So the first thing, what if I do glue gun on the canvas? because I haven't used my new glue gun on the canvas yet. I was doing it on a mat. The last week I've made a tree of life on a silicone mat. Lots of fun and easy technique for everybody who's afraid to destroy the canvas first. <laughs> but I'm thinking I need to try it directly on the canvas. In the last video, I asked my followers how long you've been watching my tutorials. Many of you who were watching me for over a year or even two years, which is awesome so you know that when I am making a design I like to do it separately and very often not even the whole section but just elements and then I put them together planning the composition. This is just baking paper but of course you can use tracing paper or any paper for your design. If you are curious how I approach the subject I usually do some research online so I look at the flowers that I like the most, not only for the color, but especially the type of petals, the, the right angle. You can also look at some drawings. You can look at templates. That's a really beautiful one. Oh, goodness me. Look at those lines. I think I want some buds here. This is a very rough sketch. Obviously, I'm going to change it slightly once I use a glue gun. I drew this one, but then I thought I want a bigger one, so let's get rid of this. And it was too small. You see, if that was on the canvas, I would have been redrawing and redrawing. I think I like this big one. I think I finally am happy with this. If you were using a soft graphite pencil, like 2B, 4B, 6B, it's going to transfer super easily. You can take it down, it doesn't move. I can tape it down to the table actually. And now, just some kind of a blunt edge. I usually use my nails, but I know how annoying this can be. I'll just do this quickly. You can also go over and draw over, and that will transfer beautifully. My students call this magic. <laughs> My new baby is ready. Let me start with maybe those smaller parts so I see how it behaves on the canvas. It's always risky, that's why I've been doing it on silicone mat recently. I haven't done it on canvas for a long time, so I've been pretty hesitant now. And especially that this glue gun does behave differently. It's always good to have a tool to spread the endings if something goes wrong quickly. I'm using golden sticks so you can see better. Yes, my glue gun is behaving well. That's good. Those leaves, they do have interesting patterns and they are serrated, so this may be a little problem for us, but we'll see. This glue gun actually allows you to maneuver, you know, to some degree. And I'm going back and joining them. That was good. Every glue stick behaves slightly differently. That's what I've noticed. And also the golden one are a bit different. In my opinion, the transparent ones are slightly easier to work with. Okay, I think I've got the system. <laughs> it looks like I'm sewing, doesn't it? Okay, so you've got an idea how I make the leaf. I'll, I'll finish those two and I'll be back at the flower. I'm ready to do the petal. And if it's slightly different, that's fine. Some of those sections, I might drag them inside like this. A couple of my lovely subscribers told me that once you hit those little hairy bits with a hairdryer, they melt. But I don't want to risk my bigger lines. I don't know how this gold glue will behave, so I'm not doing it. 
Well, now I can sort of drag it more freely and some edges will be thicker, thinner. That's fine with this design now. If it's too thin, come back and add more. That's perfect, those blobs. What I like about this glue gun, actually I can drag a quite a long section without pushing this and fighting with it. There's a link in the video's description, but I was told that they all sold out. And I've been wondering whether it's us my amazing community whether we are buying them out. I'm not sponsored by them, by the way. I'm not sponsored at all. All right, let's do this one. I'm pressing lighter and stronger, depending on how much glue I want. I don't know how many I want, maybe a couple more. So you can see how easy that goes. So I'll do the other petals and then come back once I have to do this. Now I got to the central part and I think I'm going to do two lines. I'm just thinking probably that's probably half done with two glue sticks. Glue gun became a bit hairy. Right, one part. Now that's why I did it. I wanted to make it pretty thin. That's okay. I've still no idea how to do those little blobs. Maybe I'll use something else. I have to think about it. So at the moment I am just going to do the second elongated part. Yay! I did it. Okay, what time is it? Oh, 1 a.m. I think I should leave it till tomorrow. I'm slowly getting closer to the end. I'm thinking I could have made the design easier, but I wanted to test the gun's behavior and whether I can do what I wanted to do. See, by the last leaf I finally figured out how to make those pointy bits. Well, the biggest test for my little machine, whether I'll get a nice, smooth, thick stem. I want it thicker than here. I don't think I want double lines. I want one really chunky line. If it stops working halfway through, it'll be like every other glue gun I had. I would also like to give a huge shout out to my wonderful patrons. Last week, my super talented editor was very, very ill. And unfortunately, we had to take a whole week off. But the direct support of the patrons helps keep the channel going, no matter what's happening. You can join too from just $2 a month and get access to extended versions of every single week's tutorial and more bonus content. So it runs nicely, but yes, it does stop at some point, but in a nice kind of a, let's just say, kind of a smooth way. In hindsight, I'm thinking that this is a baby glue gun and it's a precision glue gun, so I don't think me expecting to make a huge, fat, thick stem. Maybe, maybe that's why. Now I'm doing something freehand. If I'm unhappy with it, oh my goodness, that would be bad. Ha! Huh. <gasps> okay, did it. Let's add a... Again, freehand little bud, like really, really small one. I think it's a really nice composition with this. I was considering adding something else and I found these. I think these are the smallest ones I have. They would be nice on top. Add something unusual. So that's it for the glue gun. And now we need to cover everything with my pouring mix. I have finally decided on the colors for the background. It took me some time because I wasn't sure. I'll show you which ones I picked. So we've got Naples yellow, pink blush, pearl amaranth red, phthalo green, pearl pink, and of course titanium white. And I intermix them, I'll show you. Out of these colors, I made my own mixes. For example, this is phthalo green with quite a lot of white. This green, for example, is a mix of, of this particular mix and Naples yellow with white. Then I intermixed them, I created another green and then I created this beige color. I'll show you the consistency. They're actually pretty runny. For this particular design, I want it runny. Can you see the stream is really thin, but it's uninterrupted. That's how you know that it's well mixed and a very, very small build-up this time. So I used part of paint to two parts of Floetrol and some water. That's it. I'm not using my glue because I ran out of glue. There is no right or wrong with the mixes, with your pouring mix. You can use the one you buy in the shop, but I like making my own. By the way, this Overtrol is a paint conditioner and you can buy it in any, any DIY store. That's the British equivalent of Floetrol. 
if we are putting canvas up, we know there's going to be some mess. And now, <laughs> you will not believe it. In the last episode, I was telling you that I bought a new hair dryer. It's called the flower and it behaved really well with the last painting. I was very happy with it. It's much smaller and not as powerful, but for this one, I actually had to apologize to my old contraption. So yes, if you thought you were never going to see it again, it's coming back. It's coming <laughs> back for today. Why? You may wonder why, what's wrong with me? It's because I'm going to blow over quite a few lines. These are barriers to paint, all those thicker lines of glue. So I need something much stronger than my little flower to actually blow the paint over the whole thing. I think I'm going to start with the sections I want the lightest. If you've never watched me doing that, don't be alarmed. It's going to work, hopefully. So I want quite a lot of this light colour here. You see, those containers are perfect because I can do this. They are lids from hair products. Now, let me move it a bit down. See how beautifully it covers the lines. I even like it now, you know, touching the edges helps because then the paint can glide easily. I like doing that. Also, I'm going to reuse, collect all the drippings, so no worries. A little bit of this, so we're here. Not sure about the darker one, perhaps as well. See if I like it. If it's not enough, I can add some more. Also, the section on the flowers will not be seen. I'm, I'm going to blow it kind of off the flowers if that makes any sense. All right, so we've got the beigey, creamy tones here. Oh, I forgot about gold, haven't I? But maybe let's put the greens first. This is so much fun, you know, spreading those colors. I love it. No, every time I do it, I feel like cooking, even though I'm not, not a master cook. <laughs> no, not at all. I really want the colours to blend much more, so that should happen in a minute. Health and safety reasons first, so please don't use that crazy contraption. Don't try to do it because you can cut yourself and last time it actually fell off. All right, ready? First thing I want to say, too much pink, way too much pink. I'm going to remove it slightly. It looks like a lot of paint, but it's not. You can see just a few drops. Now we are getting some really pretty colours. Liking that. And look, all oh, those cells. There's no silicone, not at all. Don't the colours look very pretty here? So before I collect all the leftover, I am touching up the edges, checking if there's any area that's not covered and I I always cover it with the same color oh no I didn't use any gold I didn't use gold and I've got multiple cells that's how I collect my paint I'll show you and I'll have a brand new color I never know what I'm getting time to see what color I've got with all those pinks and greens and creams. I think it's going to be like a muted greeny colour. Oh, wow. I'm liking it. So this will be used for one of my future paintings. Could you imagine that there's quite a lot of rose and pink in it? A couple of days later and we've got this. Look how beautifully 
it dried it's really smooth I love the colors I am almost ready to paint the flowers I usually like to cover the area with white first because this green for example here is pretty dark and I don't want it to be partially seen so this is a perfect time really peaceful relaxing when you can listen to some music or podcast that's what I usually do one is ready we can see it better I will be painting the flowers now and as you can imagine because I picked those shades for the background that's the kind of color I would like for my petals I will mix a very light shade of pink for everything like a peachy lighter than this one let me mix something and see if I like it I added a little bit of rose because I think we need some more pinky shade in places that's a nice one and maybe a little bit of this this is pearl amaranth red really experimenting now what will look good oh that's a bit too dark bit of yellow here as well this is the naples yellow mixed with a bit of my blush really want those colors to blend in nicely and i'll continue with each petal in a similar manner using the same colors but darker in the mid sections it really looks good with the background doesn't it that's why when i was planning the background i had to really think about what colors i want my flowers to be even though i, I wasn't like 100 percent sure but i thought that would look good something very very dark dark peachy and maybe purple in the middle i am also going to use the same color inside the stamen yellow here still haven't decided what i want to touch all the raised areas with gold considering it a little bit of a precision work here so i might just come back with some highlights now i think I've decided to make it even darker in the middle and I'm liking it. <laughs> Forgive me, but at the moment, that's that's what I wanted. I'll be doing it till I'm happy. That's just me. I can never leave something when I'm half satisfied with it. Yes, we wanted some depth and I'm going to repeat it here. So there's a smallest, smallest touch of black in the same colors as I made the flowers to finish it off couple of highlights I might intermix the greens because obviously I will not want something that vibrant here no this is pearl cactus green this one is on the blue side as you can see and this is my leftover phthalo green all right so small brush and see what we can get oh that's so crazy Whoever called it pale must have had some really good sense of humor. So I am also going to add a bit of brown. You can probably see how much I enjoy just mixing colors. That's <laughs> something I really like. Um, thinking of maybe a bit of lighter. Oh, that's nice. So this color, because there's titanium white in it, is more opaque. I'm going to use this as my base layer. I mentioned at the beginning that I was thinking about some gold. Looking at this now, I really don't want too much gold. I've got a pen that I could go over, but that would make just a really very thick border. And I don't think I want it. Decided to use my finger and touch some sections. And the same with the golden beads. I mocked them up and you know what? They just look too harsh with the painting. And if I want more, I can always add later on. Yes, I do want some those sleeve sections because they were quite dark. Applying the pollen now, I'm using cadmium, just cadmium yellow mixed with a bit of green as well. And there are some bigger drops at the end. Something like that. Again, I'm mixing the same colors I used before. There's nothing new here. The very last thing I have to add, because these are already dry, some of them, of course, to be golden. 
once this is applied I am going to wait for a couple of days and then we'll apply some varnish. If you are going to make something similar, work inspired by my tutorials, I really, really enjoy seeing your work. So if you send me a picture via Instagram, that will be fabulous. But if you are making a tutorial or posting anyone's social media, I would really appreciate mentioning me or referencing my, my video. That would be fantastic. All the designs are mine. are mine, I designed them myself and quite a few of you have questions about my, my designs, whether they are available. I haven't decided yet, but I don't really sell them. The only place that I uh, share some of them, the upper tiers of my uh, patron. So this is just one way of me saying a huge massive thank you for the wonderful, wonderful support. That's what we have, it's fresh, so it's not varnished yet, but it's going to be on my website if you would like to have the original. Well, there we are. I hope you enjoyed this one. I truly did. It took me a bit longer than expected, but I'm really, really happy with the end result. Just look at those deep colors. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you would like to see more, consider joining my Patreon. Most of my recent extended tutorials have actually been double in length, so there's a lot of extra content there for you to enjoy. If you really like this piece, you can actually own the original by heading over to abcreativeofficial.com. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all at the premiere of my new video next Saturday. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.